أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praises are due to Allah May peace and blessings be upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household companions and all believers to the day of accountability Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu This is uh, a special edition of um, Al Burhan series, which has been dedicated as online platform to learn more about our Deen. More importantly, at this period of um, lockdown, where we are kept or retire into our homes. Uh, while the coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, ravages the world. We beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to save us from this um, calamity, save humanity, and um, preserve all our lives. And we as well pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all efforts uh, to mitigate against the spread of this pandemic uh, with successes, uh, open successes, I mean. So inshallah, today we are discussing a very relevant topic uh, to the situation that we are in. And inshallah, the topic is Allah's wisdom behind trials and calamity. Yes, um, trials and calamity um, basically, is one of the traditions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or among the traditions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, magnifies his presence, magnifies his dominion, and um, emphasize his sovereignty over all his creatures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has made um, calamity and disaster a form of test and um, a sign of Allah's love, interestingly, for a believer, whom, whomever Allah SWT loves. Allah as well has made um, trials and um, calamity and disaster one of the ways um, that Allah SWT shows that he loves a particular servant of his uh, because um, disasters and calamity are like a medicine um, when you take medicine you are chewing the pills you are chewing the tablet and uh, you, you basically feel the the bitterness by the end of the day that bitter pills that you have taken the goal, the aim, is to bring about um, sound health, to bring about um, healthy status in you, to take away whatever pain you have, to take away whatever ailment you have in your body. And um, that's why when calamity falls before someone, it is not enough to now allow such calamity to, to weigh one down and um, won't start to, to group in hopelessness. Rather, you know, it alerts one's consciousness for one to take a deep retrospect and face the reality of where he has gone wrong and um, retrace a step back to his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in life, several calamities bef befalls humanity. Um, ranging from poverty, loss of life, uh, to be stricken by, by plague, accidents, sickness, loss of job, loss of property, and a host of other forms of um, calamity that Allah SWT used. So, and that's why Allah SWT has clearly stated in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, وَلَنَبِلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءُ وَنَقُسٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ 
be sure we shall test you with something of fear, fear and hunger, some loss in goods or lives or the fruits of your toil, but give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 125. So these are some of the um, basic understandings that we need to understand regarding calamity. So the wisdom behind such calamity that we face in our life uh, as follows. Number one, it stands as trials and calamity. I mean, trials and calamity are a form of test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it is coming as a form of examination, a form of scrutiny, you know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know our level of faith, to know our loyalty to him, to test our sincerity and honesty with regards to the faith that we claim. It is not enough to say, I'm a believer. It's not enough. Surah Al-Ankabut, Quran 29, verse 1. Allah says, Do men think that they will be left alone on saying, We believe, and that they will not be tested? We did test those before them. And Allah will certainly know those who are true from those who are false. So the calamity comes as test. Allah SWT wants to know our sincerity. Just like we take exams in life. You know, when you take exams, test to move to the next level. So Allah SWT has placed us trials and calamity there for his servants. When he tests their truthfulness, their honesty, then he raised them in rank before him. He raised them in status before him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Imam Hassan al-Basri, may Allah have uh, mercy on him, he has said regarding calamities and trials, do not resent the calamities that come and the, the disasters that occur for perhaps and something that you dislike will be your salvation. And perhaps in something that you prefer will be your doom. And um, El Fadl Bon Sahal as well said, there is a blessing in calamity that the wise man should not ignore, for it erases sins, gives one the opportunity to attain the reward for patience, dispels negligence. You know, when, when calamity comes, you know, it helps a believer to dispel his negligence, his, his laxity, where he has become nonchalant. When calamity strikes, you know, it alerts his consciousness. It reminds one of blessings at the time of health, calls one to repent, and encourages one to give charity, as said by al fudail Bon Sahal. So, in addition to that, the second um, hikmah, the second benefit or essence of calamity is for blotting the sins of a believer. Yes, calamity, through calamity, when calamity befalls a believer, Allah uses that to cleanse his sins. A show of love and kindness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his servant, his slave. In the hadith, as related by Abu, by, by Abu Sa'id and Abu Huraira, they have reported that they had Allah's messenger, may peace be upon him, as saying, Never is a believer stricken with discomfort, hardship, or illness, grief, or even with mental worry except that his sins are expiated for him. Yes, sins are cleansed for a believer. Whenever a believer feels any discomfort, when he's stricken by any discomfort, any form of hardship, any form of illness, even grief, sadness, sorrow that a believer goes through, it doesn't come for free. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses that to expiate for him his sins, to cleanse for him his sins. Number three, it as well comes as a signal to one sins and iniquities. You know, when sins comes, when one falls into sins, mistakes, error, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses that to alert one. Allah uses it to alert one so that one um, gains consciousness and rises to um, uprightness. Number four, it exposes human weakness and incapacity. When calamity falls, look at the example of the corona that we are passing through, the corona pandemic presently. The entire humanity with the level of technological advancement with the level, level of development in nuclear power, level of do, development in artificial intelligence that the world is trending in now. Despite all this advancement in biology, in physics, in chemistry, talk about it. But the entire humanity is being stricken by a virus and we are counting death after death. Presently, we are talking about more than 30,000 in the world, more than 40,000 persons died because of this little um, virus that cannot even be, you know, visible, be seen using the naked eyes. But Allah SWT through that is demonstrating that who owns the dominion of today Lillahi al-wa'id al-qahar is basically for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most powerful, the one Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that shows the weakness, incapacity of a human being in general. Then number five, is calamity stands, comes as punishment for perpetration of evil on earth. Surah to uh, Shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whatever strikes you of disaster, it is for what your hands have earned, but Allah, but he pardons much. So whatever happens to us, it is out of what we have done. We are facing Corona today. We are having challenge with Corona today. Humanity at large need to do a check. We need to do a retrospect. We need to repent. We need to know that evil has manifest on land and on sea. As Allah SWT has said, in Surah to Rome, Dhar al Fasadu fil Bar wal Bahar, even manifest on land and on sea, be my Kasabat Aidinas, out of what mankind has earned for himself, Liudi Kohum Bado Lezi Amilu, out of the actions of man, so that Allah SWT make them taste out of the action. Wala Alehum Yarajun, perhaps, perhaps they will return. They will repent, move away from this uh, evil. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu have said that there are five things with which you will be tested and I ask refuge with Allah, lest you live to see them. He said, number one, immorality never appears among a people to such an extent that they commit it openly, but plagues and diseases that were never known among the, the, the predecessors will spread among them. SubhanAllah, this is the making of our own action. This is the making of our own action. The calamity that humanity is facing presently, it is what we have earned from our own doings. So we need to make a, a retrospect. These are some of the wisdom behind this calamity that befalls man behind the plagues that spread, behind the sickness that move. But we know that all these calamities are within, under the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa have said, he said, la adawa wa la qiyaro. He says, there is no contagious disease that spreads on its own. It spreads, it spreads under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It spreads under the power of Allah SWT. Coronavirus is not beyond the power of Allah SWT. Rather, it's within and under the dominion of Allah SWT. That's why we need to open our hearts 
make a you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can overlook our mistakes, forgive our errors, forgive our iniquities, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us as an act of ibadah, grant all our effort with successes in this life and the life to come. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.